Hello and welcome. Um, so, just going to review in this first video segment here some of the capture traffic that we got with the three different tests we had on each uh, protocol. So, we'll look first here at our wire guard traffic that we used to access uh, just our ba basic HTTP website. So, like mentioned in uh, the document, there's not a whole lot as far as meets the eye to really dig into per se. To per se. Um, I mean, if we take, for example, just packet number five here, and let's start from the very basics of frame. I mean, there's not much more we see here than we always usually see. We can tell that it's UDP, of course. Uh, WireGuard uses UDP on its protocol, which is really efficient because using T TCP on a uh, uh, VPN connection is not the worst thing in the world, and o OpenVPN has a way of doing it that it's more effective than, uh, uh, I guess, your basic implementation, but in any case, uh, on our Ethernet layer we see the uh, MAC addresses of the source and the destination, this being the router and this being my laptop here. So there's not too much to see. I mean that's, and honestly right there is essentially about as much um, divulging as we can really get from the WireGuard protocol. We can see, well, and that's not fully true. We can go all the way up to Internet Protocol version 4 here and we see the source IP address and the destination IP address. And this is actually kind of an interesting point of disagreement and even I guess to some degree uh, controversy. Um, a lot of people kind of tend to prefer other VPN protocols because WireGuard's coding allows the source and the destination IP addresses to be seen by third parties. Now, this depends, of course, on what implementation you're using a VPN for. If you're using it to hide and encrypt as much of your, you know, as many aspects, that is to say, of your net network traffic as possible, then obviously that's not a very desirable feature to have. But if you're using it as a means to remotely connect to point A to point B, maybe it's not as big as deal, and the advantage of speed takes precedence. So, and then of course, delving further and looking in the UDP protocol, it tells us the source and the destination port, uh, 51820 being WireGuard's default port. So, and then it shows us the checksum fields and the timestamps, etc. Oops, and that's the UDP payload. Let's look at the WireGuard protocol view. We can see that it's transport data. And that's essentially it. I mean, there's not a whole lot that, uh, I mean, you know, with the exception of adding our decryption key and looking at this packet, there's nothing that we can really tell about what is being transported here at all. So it uses some really good encryption algorithms. So that's the nice thing about WireGuard. And as we can see here, there's really n nothing else besides that going on. Looking at OpenVPN with the same test that we performed. So obviously there's a difference between the way OpenVPN and WireGuard uh, encrypt and send traffic. Um, WireGuard, in the sense of speaking that is, is very straightforward and uses a protocol, so to speak. Maybe another, depending on how you set it up. But with OpenVPN, and this goes again, let's see if I can bring this up here. This goes again kind of to the software, um, how you want to select it. Because as you see here, you can set it up to use only UDP, only TCP. You can set it to use both, which is what I have used, because this was the default setting for this test. 
um, as well as with IPv6. So as we look through the packet here, in this particular instance, I don't see here. I, oh yeah, sure enough, it uh, does use IPv6 in some instances here. And then you can change that to be, you know, do you want both or do you want it to only be IPv4? I find it interesting that it doesn't have an IPv6 only, but that then again, that does make sense considering uh, this particular setup doesn't exactly allow, oh well, considering that I'm not using an IPv6 address. And it's still gaining popularity, so there is that. A connection timeout, and then it has these things to allow compression, certain cipher algorithms, and here you can only, that is to say, you can choose to only allow certain TLS versions to be allowed over the encrypted connection. Um, I've This one was actually checked by default. I unchecked it because my particular DNS server I prefer, um, it, it uh, blocks certain ports that I find uh, beneficial to block. Uh, but you can check this here in case your DNS server maybe isn't as reliable, or if it fails, you want a means that it can fall back on, hence DNS fallback. Um, and then other fun, more aesthetic things. But the, uh, the OpenVPN for, if there's any bashing that may happen or occur that is, you know, against WireGuard or other protocols, one thing that can be said it is that it is very uh, versatile and customizable. Um, you know, there's a lot that you can do, and it uh, obviously it uses kind of an interesting combination of methods to transport data that, you know, if I were a hacker and if I obtained a decryption key with WireGuard, it would be very quick and straightforward that I'd be able to decrypt that traffic. Here, it uh, it might be a little more complicated. But we can see that uh, if we look at the OpenVPN protocol itself, uh, again, just like with WireGuard, we see the MAC addresses, source, and destination. And then under Internet Protocol, with this particular setup, it does show our source and destination addresses, although as I understand it, you can uh, set up a way to mask that. And that's kind of the thing that turns people off of WireGuard is with most implementations you can't do that. Although that that is not to say that they are and have uh, come up with implementations that goes around that and you can mask that. Um, you, you'll see WireGuard is an available protocol on a lot of uh, popular VPN servers like Nord or I think Express as well and others out there. Uh, and then looking at our UDP protocol we see uh, source port 1194, which is the default port for OpenVPN. And then not much else there with the OpenVPN protocol. <laughs> if we look under data, to, to be fair, it uh, I, I don't know why a Wireshark shows the data here versus why it doesn't display it so much with the uh, WireGuard protocol, but all the same, it is encrypted. So there's nothing it shows our peer ID is zero so that's pretty in, that you know it, it's a pretty interesting uh, setup with OpenVPN and there's a lot of ways that you can do it which makes it really uh, entertaining if we just take a quick glance over our other tests here there wasn't a lot of difference uh, as you may notice with each successful test but I do find it interesting that with, and and I should mention this is our OpenVPN test for uh, FTP, it uses TCP, uh, the TCP protocol here for a few frames when communicating with my local FTP server. Um, I'm not entirely sure for the reason of that. I'm still trying to understand it, but for the most part it remains as OpenVPN encrypted traffic. And of course, because I'm accessing a local network resource and not, you know, sending a DNS request over the internet and trying to access how many different servers, etc. There's not a lot of tr oops, and 
This is OP. This is the wrong one. Wire guard. There we go. <laughs> the same with wire guard here. Wire guard apparently has a little bit more going on with the second test. I can't say whether or not that's that I didn't uh, stop the file capture as quickly or not, but uh, there is that. And the reason, so with the statistics, the reason I didn't really go with how long it took for such and such to actually reach a client is for a couple of different reasons. Number one, with the encrypted traffic, we can't actually see where we actually get a successful connection to, for exa this example, my FTP server. Uh, but if we look under statistics and under the capture file properties, we see that there's an average packets per second that's displayed, and I think that's probably, in this case at least, with this uh, particular experiment, the best resource to kind of go by, because it gives us an average regardless of how long or short the capture file is. Um, but with the FTP server, there's not as much traffic because we're accessing a local resource. Now, let's see here. With looking at our third test, we get obviously a heck of a lot more traffic because, and let's see here, was it? It was OpenVPN. Let, well, let's just take a quick glance over WireGuard here. Obviously, there's not much to see. I mean, if we sort by protocol, we can see that everything is WireGuard except a few things that are TCP retransmissions. And so that's pretty interesting. Looking at OpenVPN, and initially when I was looking at this particular capture, my, my shock was a little interesting when I saw that, oh, there's some displayed traffic here with, uh, let's see now. Apologies there. I, uh, my brain died. So, uh, so looking particularly at the TLS handshake activity that goes on. If we go under here under handshake protocol for TLS v1.3 on a fair choice number of these, we can see actually a lot of interesting things. We can see the session ID, the different cipher suites that are used, which is quite a lot. Um, compression methods, which is none. Uh, we can see the server name, which apparently is null. But, so some of these are actually still good, despite being revealed, so to speak, about remaining uh, encrypted and secret. However, if we look, oops, let's see if I can clean this up a bit here. I've left an interesting trail of breadcrumbs I have. The server name, where are we? Oh, I just saw it. There we are, server name. So we can see mail.google.com on this one. We see mail.google.com, uh, safebrowsing.google. And yeah, I mean, there's, there's an interesting amount of, and particularly with Google, I mean, obviously, as I was accessing my own Gmail account, um, that would be the servers that we're seeing here. But nonetheless, we, even with the encrypted traffic, uh, we still see some information that is divulged here, and I, I feel like that's probably because I, and going back here to OpenVPN settings, let me bring that back on screen here. There we go. Maybe. <laughs> so going back to OpenVPN settings here. If we look here, we can, oh, where is it now, VPN protocol, seamless tunnel. So in other words, block internet while VPN is paused or reconnecting. I wonder perhaps if the VPN signal was getting a little weak. And so for those moments, it uh, reversed or reversed, reverted to using uh, more regular network traffic. Uh, I don't know for certain, but in any case, uh, with OpenVPN being very customizable, it can be both beneficial and 
to some degree dangerous of course um, you know knowing what you're doing with the more customizable a program is is going to you know allow you to either prosper or fail miserably um, but that's kind of the gist of most of the traffic that we see in those particular files so in my opinion I, I really hold both of the protocols in reasonably high regard um, you know for me in my personal daily use WireGuard is beneficial to me but at the same time uh, having you know experimented now with OpenVPN a bit I, I could easily see myself just as well using OpenVPN it's reasonably reliable and uh, doesn't have much of a difference with uh, speed either um, WireGuard tends to be just a little faster but then again not always um, so that's essentially the conclusions and the analysis of what we've seen with this experiment here uh, thanks for joining me today. for joining me today I'm Joel Manning and have a great